All right, we march on into lesson seven. Lesson seven is one of those weird lessons that doesn't really fit anywhere. So we do it here, uh, but it doesn't really fit anywhere. It's the lesson on L'Hopital's rule. Uh, L'Hopital's rule was developed by one of the Bernoullis, but it was bought by L'Hopital when he wrote the first calculus textbook. So since he bought it, the rule is his. And it goes something like this. So this is L'Hopital's rule, sometimes called Le Hospital's rule because that O has the circumflex pitch mark and that means that a letter dropped out from the olden days and that letter is S. So it goes like this. Suppose that f of a equals g of a and both of those are zero and that f and g are differentiable in an open interval, we can call that open interval i, containing the point a and that g prime of x is not zero anywhere on that interval except maybe at a. Then, if we're looking for the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x, then that limit is the same as the limit as x approaches a of f prime of x over g prime of x if the latter limit exists. What in the world is this? What is this? So this is the limit you're interested in finding. And because f of a and g of a are both zero, and f and g are differentiable, f and g are continuous, so we would figure these out by putting zero here and zero there. But zero over zero is undefined, it's indeterminate, we don't know what zero over zero is. L'Hopital's rule says, try this instead. Take the derivative of f, the derivative of g, evaluate there. We can do that because g prime is not zero on the interval, except maybe at a. So the limit, uh, this won't be awful. And then if that blue limit exists, it's the same as the red one. Why does this work? Uh, this works because... Differentiable functions are locally linear. In other words, uh, depending on who you had for Calc 1, uh, one of the big thrusts in Calc 1 is that everything is aligned. Everything is aligned. If you zoom in close enough, everything is aligned. This is a curvy function, this is a curvy function. But if we zoom in at x equals a, this curvy function becomes its tangent line. This curvy function becomes its tangent line. And to compare tangent lines, all we need to compare are the slopes. So we take a look at their slopes, and if the quotient of the slopes is this, is this limit that can be found, then the quotient of the functions approaches that same limit. That's the idea. That's what's going on. So to demonstrate, find the limit as x approaches 2, radical 2 plus x minus 2 over x minus 2.
Uh, this was the sort of thing that you would have had to have done in Calc 1 by either recognizing that this is a, de a derivative by definition uh, or by doing the thing with the conjugate. Uh, but here we know that the numerator approaches zero and the denominator approaches zero. So by L'Hopital, this is the limit as x approaches 2 of. We take the derivative of the numerator, minus 0. We take the derivative of the denominator, minus 0. And we try to figure out what this is. And it turns out that we can figure out what this is. Uh, 4 to the negative 1 half, that's a half. So this is a half times a half. That's 1 fourth. And because this limit exists, this limit is the same. What about this? 1 minus cosine x over x squared as x approaches 0. Well, what is that? Well, the numerator approaches 0 and the denominator approaches 0. So by L'Hopital, this is the limit as x approaches 0 of take the derivative of the numerator, take the derivative of the denominator. If this limit exists, this limit will be the same. Well, that's not helpful because this goes to 0 and this goes to 0. So we're in the same boat we were here, and so the solution is exactly the same. We run L'Hopital's rule a second time, and we can run L'Hopital's rule a second time because this limit is still 0 over 0. So we take the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator, and we try again. If this limit exists, then this limit will be the same, and whatever this limit is, the original limit is. So if we find this, we find that. As x approaches 0, that's 1 over 2, and we're done. We are done. This is a horse of a different color. And this is a horse of a different color because as x approaches pi over 2 from the left-hand side, this numerator gets large without bound, and this denominator gets large without bound. And so you would think, wait a minute, L'Hopital's rule says this works for 0 over 0, and that's not what we have here. But I say, au contraire, mon frere, because... Infinity is just the reciprocal of zero. Gosh, that's that's a really hand-wavy way to say it. Uh, there are many more mathematically rigorous ways to say that. But infinity is basically the reciprocal of zero. So we really do have a zero over zero situation. And L'Hopital's rule does apply. And to apply L'Hopital's rule, we take the derivative of the numerator, which you remember from calc 1 and the derivative of the denominator which you remember from calc 1. Uh, this cancels with one of those and then we ask ourselves what this is. So this is sine over cosine, this is 1 over cosine, so we're really dealing with sine x as x approaches pi over 2 and that is 1. I have a couple for you to consider. There are a couple for you to try. Uh, you might want to try the limit as x approaches 1 of x to the 9th minus 1 over x to the 5th minus 1. And somebody might want to try natural log x over square root of x. Uh, if you're looking for questions to practice, and I'm sure that you are uh, section 4.8 in volume 1 you're interested in trying 367 369 nope not true not true 371 379 
and 401. Those are odd numbers, so the answers are in the back of the book. That's our 10 minutes. I look forward to seeing you in class.